So in my last video on this SOAP service, we added in authentication. So we can now supply a username and a password to our SOAP service, and we can get back our response if they authenticate correctly. But this means that the moment that anyone who can authenticate with our SOAP service can currently call the get weather forecast operation. So we now need to go and add in some authorization so that we can make sure that the user that is authenticating is allowed to call the get weather forecast SOAP operation. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is that I find you. So let's carry on and look at authorization this time for our SOAP service. What we're gonna start with is our authentication data store. And we're gonna enhance this so that we can add in something like this where we can supply a roles collection for the given user. So in this case, Zoe is both a user and she's a manager. And then eventually we'll get to the point where we will authorize an operation to say that you either need to be a user or you need to be a manager or you need to have some particular role to be able to call that operation. So to get this working, we need to enhance our auth data store. So let's go and have a look at that. And we need to change our authentication entry. So we had a roles property to the class to store our allowed roles for this user we initialize that roles to the set of roles that are passed in in the constructor. Then we can enhance our auth data store so that where we're getting out all of the user's information, we get the property for the roles and populate a roles collection. And then we can pass that roles collection into the auth entry constructor. And then lastly, inside of our authenticate method when we're populating the identity after we've added our name claim we can then iterate across the roles that that user has and we can populate a role claim with all of the roles so you'll get a repeating collection of role claim types with one for each different role that that particular user possesses and then in our soap controller We've already got the authorize attribute specified against the operation selector so that we ensure that you have to be authenticated. But what we can do now is enhance that so that we can specify a roles property. And we could say that in order to call our operation, you have to be a member of the administrator role. So now if we run this up and we run in our usual request again, we can see that we do get a 403 forbidden response. And we're back to the same old problem again, where we're getting our problem details rest response coming back rather than a soap fault. So we've got to go and fix that. To do that, we can follow something very similar to what we did for the authentication. So over in our authentication handler, if you followed along, then we overrode the handle challenge async in order to be able to return a soap fault if the controller has a soap attribute against it. So we can do something very similar, only this time we override the handle forbidden async. So again, we check to see if this particular controller has a soap attribute. If it does, then we write out a soap fault detailing the authorization error that's occurred. Otherwise, we just carry on so that we can still get our REST responses working if they fall through this handler. So now when I run in this request again, I get my SOAP fault with an authorization error saying the security token could not be authenticated or authorized. And then if I jump back over to my controller and I make it so that it's a role that Zoe does have, so a user or a manager, and then run that in. You can see that she does get authorized and she's allowed to call our SOAP operation selector and follow through the rest and call the service. So that's a good start for authorization, but it's not really quite what we want. So imagine if there were multiple operations inside of our controller. So at the moment we only have the get weather forecast, but imagine that we had something along 
these lines where we had another operation and we want to allow our user to be able to call the get weather forecast but not necessarily get weather forecast too. At the moment if they're authorized to call operation selector then they can call all the operations that operation selector allows you to call. So we want to change this so that we can make sure that we are authorized for the particular operation that's being called. So let's just put that back for now and over in our auth data store we could think of maybe having a scheme that gives us something like this where we can allow and have a whitelist of entries and within each entry we specify the service and within each service we can then specify again either a, a whitelist or a blacklist of the operations so we're saying that we want to allow only access to service one and within service one we want to allow only access to the get weather forecast operation so everything else for this particular user would be denied access and then alongside that you could conceive that this might be a blacklist at this level or even a blacklist at this level so it gives you the the benefit of whitelisting and blacklisting to make your authorization data store as concise as you need without needing to list out all of the operations of a service if you only want to grant access to a single operation or a shorter list of operations you can choose whether you want a blacklist or a whitelist is where we're going with this so let's for now set this as a blacklist against the services but a whitelist for the operations so let's go and read this data from the data store so in order to do that we need a new permission item class and that just has three properties within it the service name and the collection of allowed or denied operations then we need to change our auth entry so that we add in the collection of allowed and denied services and we also pass those into the constructor and initialize those two collections now in our auth data store let's add in a couple of methods to go and read that information so we read the permission collection so this is the top level allow or deny element and then within that we are reading the contents of the sub collections against the operations so we need to go and implement that read operation collection as well so let's go and read that so that now populates our operation collection correctly so now before we set up our auth entry we go and read both those allow and deny collections and populate two collections from what's in the file and then we can pass in those two collections to our auth entry constructor so that's our auth data store all taken care of so now let's add authorization into our auth data store so we'll create a new interface for our dependency injection purposes of I authorization repository which makes us implement a single authorized user async so the same way that we did for our authentication and then over in our auth data store we can have our auth data store implement that so we check our object that's passed in and make sure it is a soap auth data that's passed in and then if it is we can cast that appropriately and then we're going to come back to this perform soap operation authorization in a bit so effectively what we're doing here is getting hold of the user out of our user store and then we're determining whether we've got a whitelist or a blacklist to deal with or neither so it's a default case so let's deal with the default case first so if we don't have a whitelist or a blacklist then we just deny authorization by default so that's the safest thing to do is not allow anyone through so if it's a whitelist then we by default deny access to everything unless that particular service that we're trying to call exists in our allowed permissions and again we've got to go and add in this target service name but we'll do that in a minute so if that service is found we then go and check the operation to see whether or not the particular operation is allowed for this particular user and then the blacklist is just exactly the opposite of that 
then just our finishing up our method so let's go and add those flags and extra information into our auth data so target service name and whether or not we should be performing the soap authorization or not and then let's go and add that authorization data store to our dependency injection so we're just adding in i authorization repository and we're using the same file or data store object to deal with authorization in our case for simplicity now in order to implement the last aspect of this we need an enhanced version of the authorize attribute so let's go and create a new authorize filter but it is an authorized attribute as we'll see so we're going to extend off of the existing Microsoft implemented authorized attribute. And we're also going to implement the I authorization filter so that we can plug into the MVC pipeline. So that means that we need to implement this on authorization method. And I'm going to implement that as an asynchronous method. So inside of the on authorization, I just do a task run and wait for that task to return before we carry on. And then inside of our on authorization async, we again try to get hold of the SOAP attribute against the controller. And if they, we can't find one, then we throw an exception. And also if we can't get the SOAP auth data out of the HTTP context, then likewise, we can't authorize. So we throw an exception in that regard as well. Then we can populate the target service name, and then we get hold of our authorization repository and we make a call to the authorize user async method. And if that doesn't give us back a true response, then we send back a forbid or we flag to the MVC framework that this request should be forbidden. So now back over in our controller, we've now got a conflict of interests. So let's get rid of that using and that tidies that up so that that's now using our MVC filters authorize attribute. And if we run this up and I send in this request now, we see that I do get a successful response, which is kind of good, um, but doesn't really prove that our authorization is really working. So let's stop that, go over to our data store and change the fact that we're going to allow only access to get weather forecast two on service one, which of course doesn't exist, but it means that get weather forecast will by default be denied access. And now when we run this up, we get our SOAP fault because the user is not authorized to call that particular SOAP method. So it's using all the same stuff that we put in place for the roles situation in order to return our SOAP fault. So we're leveraging all of that. So now I just want to go back to what I kind of alluded to earlier in our auth data store, I mentioned that we've got this flag for the perform SOAP operation authorization or not, and why that would be the case. And as the comment says here, authorization could be called multiple times. When this comes into operation is if you, for instance, want to have a situation where you want the user to be both a user and a manager, and they have to have both of these roles rather than an or situation. So the way that the default authorization works is if you put roles equals that and you list out a comma delimited list, this is by default an or situation. So they can be a user or a manager and they will be allowed access. If you want an and situation, then you have to do it this way and you duplicate the authorize attribute and you specify the role in each one so they have to be a user and a manager which our user is but if i put a breakpoint here then when i run this in we can see i get called once and perform soap authorization is set to true but then we're going to step into here and set it to false and if i run on we can see that i do actually get called again and this time SOAP authorization has been set to false because we've already done it. So that's the situation that we're in and that's why this flag is in place. And there's a slight gotcha here as well. So if I go and put a breakpoint inside of our operation selector, then when I run this in, we can see that I get my authorization called the first time and then it, it gets called the second time, but our response has already returned at this point. And then we actually get into our MVC method as well. 
So this is going to go through and actually make the call and do everything that it needs to do, even though the call has already returned. There's a lot of wasted resource going on here. It's a bit of a gotcha with the MVC framework and the way that it works. So how do we fix it? Well, what we need to do, it turns out, is over in our MVC filter, rather than just awaiting and calling the forbid async, what we need to actually do is set a result on the context as well. And we can set this to any object result that we want, but we'll try and be consistent so that we set something meaningful. So we'll set a forbid result onto the MVC context. So if we redo that same test again, we get our authorization method called in our data store, and then our request returns with a SOAP fault, and that's it. We are done and dusted. We don't call the actual object, and we don't call twice to our data store, it's done and dusted on that first operation. So that's a lot more efficient. So just something to be careful of there. And now if I allow that operation back through and run this up again, just to demonstrate what goes on, we can see that we get our authorization performed the first time. So we come around again for the second time because we've got our authorization attribute listed twice, but we only want to perform the SOAP operation authorization once for any given request. So that's what that flag is there to do, is to prevent us needing to do that twice. So again, that's an efficiency gain that we get there, some performance, and we can see that our operation succeeds as we expect. So that's the building blocks of authorization essentially in place. And what that means is that we can go and enhance this to our needs as we would like. We could conceivably add authorization where the user has to be in a certain department of our organization. Zoe is in IT and she's in IT support specifically. So then within our SOAP auth data, we could add something like the departments that you want this particular user to be a member of. And then in our authorize attribute, we can just add a property for departments. Inside of our authorization, we can set the requested departments on our auth data object that we pass into our authorization repository that to the departments that have been requested and then over in our controller we can go and enhance our authorize attribute that now has a departments property on it to say that this person must be in the hr department for instance and then over in our data store we can go and add in a check to go and see if we've got some departments that have been requested and we get those departments out as a comma delimited list from our auth object and then we can go and check whether or not this user exists in those departments so not a full implementation but you get the idea of how you could implement that and finish that off and just to say that not only could you add it to authorization but you could also at this point when you're doing your authentication because you've read that information of what departments a user is in you could add that as some kind of custom claim into your user if you wanted to use that more explicitly inside of your SOAP operation inside of your controller. So over here, when you get the user, there would be a claim that has that department that tells you which department that they're in. So a lot of flexibility around that. And hopefully that helps you out and you understand a bit more about how you can implement authorization for our SOAP service. So that's all I wanted to cover in that one. So if you found this at all useful, then please do give this video a like and a big thumbs up. It does help this video reach out to more people. And as usual, the only other thing I need to do is to thank my channel sponsors for their continued support. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.